So my friend here, what's your name? Andre. I want to ask you, what do you think the purpose of a mosque is? Place of worship, okay. Are places of worship important? Okay. Do you follow a particular faith yourself? You're Catholic, okay. What are your thoughts on what I just said about the Hagia Sophia, Hagia Sophia becoming into a mosque? Do you have any thoughts on this? You're just here to learn. Okay, that's perfectly fine. So let me ask you, as a Catholic, do you know what we as Muslims believe about Jesus? Tell us about his, what, what he's done. Tell us about what Let's he's have done. one conversation at a time. Let me just have... I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you in a second. Yes. Okay, good. And what did you learn about him? Okay. We believe him to be a Messiah. We believe him to be a prophet, not to be God or the son of God. So we believe he is a messenger of God. And the early Christians, they never believed Jesus was God. This was a later on invention. And the idea of the Trinity, the idea of the Trinity is something which came much later. My Lord and my God. Don't preach the wrong gospel. Don't preach the wrong gospel. I'm not going to let you do it. Okay. Right? Tell the truth. Okay. Why did, Pete, why did Thomas, when he saw the risen Lord, come through the wall, say to him, My Lord and my God, and Jesus said, Blessed are you that have seen me and believe. Blessed are they who haven't seen me and they will believe. Okay, this is a typical response you hear. And the typical response is, Let me just go to the scripture and see what it says. And they have their interpretation. Other people have their own interpretation. No, we don't. We have the Bible. But George, you cannot say what you just said. Sir, let me just say. The Bible is the authority. Sir, sir, let me just explain a point here. The Bible is something which was put together much later after Jesus, and it had many different authors over many different centuries, and they chose what to keep and what not to keep. But one thing is clear. What's your name again? Andre. One thing is clear. The early Christians, they didn't believe in the Trinity like he believes in today. The Trinity is something which came much, much later. And the early followers of Christ, they did not believe he was God. And they did not believe he was the son of God. They believed he was a human being, which is what the Muslims believe. Now I'll ask you a question. Does God need to eat? No, okay. Does God need to sleep? Okay. Does God need to rest? Okay. Is God all powerful? Okay. Did Jesus eat? Did he sleep? Does he need to rest? So can he be God logically? Doesn't really make sense, right? Doesn't really make sense. And the thing is, look, you'll never find Jesus saying, worship me. That's nowhere. Jesus always said, worship God. Now, before Jesus, who were the other messengers of God that you've heard of? Moses? You've heard of Moses? Noah? Abraham? Okay. Did any of them worship Jesus or did they worship God? They worship God. Okay, good. We as Muslims, we do the same thing. We say we worship God. We don't worship Jesus. Okay. Now, what was the main message of Jesus? What have you heard? No, that's fine. That's fine. The main message that he had was to connect the lost children of Israel to God. His main message was not, I am the sacrificial lamb. He never said, I'm going to die for your sins. Now, in Christianity, in Catholicism, we believe that you forgive, you get your sins forgiven by asking for forgiveness. That's all you do. In the Catholic faith, it says you have to you accept Jesus as your savior. But the thing is, does God need to sacrifice somebody in order to forgive us? No, God can just forgive us. So what Islam teaches is God can forgive us and God doesn't need a human sacrifice. Right? And the thing is, 
we shouldn't just follow the religion of our forefathers, we should look at what is true, correct? And Islam is something which appeals not only to your heart, but also to your intellect. It tells you things which are logical. Now, so far from what I'm saying, let me know if there's anything that I'm saying that doesn't make sense to you. It makes sense, right? It makes sense, okay. Many people, they don't recognize that much of the teachings of Christianity today have nothing to do with Jesus. Much of today's Christianity has zero link to Jesus. These are things which people came up with much after him, right? He mentioned Thomas. They also mentioned people like Paul and they mentioned these figures. You must have heard of Paul, right? St. Paul. Did St. Paul ever meet Jesus? He never met Jesus, okay? So imagine if I tell you, I represent the message of Jesus and I never met Jesus and somebody else met him. Who represents Jesus more? The person who met him or did not meet him? The person who met him. When you look at the early followers of Jesus, they were very similar to Jewish people. They followed many Jewish traditions and they believed in God in a similar way to what Muslims believe. Okay? I'm going to give you some evidence for this. There's a Christian priest, uh, sorry, deacon. His name is Dr. Gerald Dirks. He was a Christian and he studied the early history of Christianity and he realized the early Christians did not believe in Jesus being God. They had many different beliefs and many of these beliefs, they came after Jesus. So he converted to Islam and he has a lecture on YouTube you can watch called Islamic Trajectories in Early Christianity. And what he shows through historical accounts is the beliefs that the Muslims hold today about Jesus is what some of the early Christian groups also believed. So what you are hearing today from Islam is nothing new. This is exactly what the early Christians believed. Have you ever read a copy of the, have you ever had a copy of the Quran? Okay, I'll try and get you a copy. The Quran is a book which was sent to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And the main aim was to get people closer to God. Okay. Now the problem is in today's world, would you say we are close to God or we're further away from God? We're further. Okay. Why do you think Andre we're further? The what? Change over the centuries. Okay. One of the reasons which I'm going to throw out there, let me know your thoughts, is human desire. So if you look at young people today, they watch music videos, they look at people who are much richer than them. The sense of morality is gone. There is no concept of the, sanct the sanctification of marriage, meaning you choose somebody, you get married to them, you have a nuclear family, you raise children, that all of that is gone. And what do you have? You have a society which is broken. You have children who aren't raised with fathers and mothers, who are raised sometimes by their grandparents or by single parents. You don't have people respecting elders and you have a society breaking down, correct? I link this to us moving away from God and moving into the world of Satan. And what is the world of Satan? Much, and I'm going to make a claim here much of the music industry which, the, which governs what young people do today, its base ideas is to get us away from God and into the hands of Satan. Now that's a bit of a wild thought. I want to first hear your thoughts on it and I'll give my explanation for it. Material things, right? So in hip hop videos, right? What's the main objects that they're pointing at that people need to try and get? Women and money. Okay, good. Is there anything in there about helping people who are homeless or poor? No. Is there anything in there that you should try and be intellectual like Malcolm X? No. What is it about? It's about creating a generation of people who are zombies, who all think they're different, but they're all the same. And the lifestyle, what type of lifestyle is promoted? All right, so women, what are women in those videos? 
objects, objects, okay? Yet, this goes against the nature of human beings, okay? There's a rapper, correct me if I'm wrong, his name is T.I. T.I., right? Recently, he was uh, in the newspapers because he's getting his daughter to have virginity tests. I don't know if you heard of this. He, you heard of this, yeah? So why did he do that? Do you know? And you know, just sticking with TI, when I found this out that I didn't know who this guy was, but when I found out he's getting his daughter to take virginity tests because he doesn't want her to be treated like an object by men, yeah, to sleep around. When I went on YouTube and I clicked TI whatever videos, his videos, one of the first videos is him next to a woman who's practically naked and he's pointing his fingers at her like she's an object. And there's even studies that show that because of the desensitization and object objectification of women, when a man sees a woman dressed in a certain way, the same part of his brain, which lights up for tool use, lights up. So here's a guy, a rapper, who promotes a hedonistic lifestyle, who promotes objectification of women, who promotes this type of thing where you use money and women and materialism, but he doesn't want that for his own daughter. And this is hypocritical. This is hypocritical, right? Now, the problem is, this is for me the world of Satan, which is getting us away from God. Because we all, we all, we all have grown up in this world, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you guys a small story and I want you to give me your thoughts on it. So, no, I'm, I'm oh, okay, okay. Yeah. so I'll get off the ladder because this. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry. So the Prophet Muhammad, he gives a very powerful example here, peace be upon him, that a man came up to him and said. You guys on camera, by the way, is that okay? Yeah, they're filming it. Yes. Uh, can, I, can I film as well? Yes, fine. Okay. Sure, give the mic and sure. sure. So, um, Okay, good. okay, so the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a young man came up to him, and you know, young man, they have urges and stuff. And he said to him, Allow me to commit fornication, meaning sex outside marriage. He just wanted to be with a girl. And the Prophet said to him, Would you like someone to do that with your mother? Would you like somebody to do that with your mother? And the man said, Of course not. He said, Would you like someone to do that with your sister? And the man said, of course not. Would you like someone to do that to your daughter? He said, no, I wouldn't. So he said, the people want for themselves what you want. Meaning have empathy. That is someone else's daughter. And if you look, T.I., he's an example of this, but in a very hypocritical way. He cares about his daughter, but he doesn't care about other people's daughters. So I'm talking about that toxic culture we have. And it's not just rap videos, it's all music videos. Whether it's um, trance, garage, I mean, I'm a bit out of date. But all these types of things, they all teach this hedonistic lifestyle which breaks down society. Because what does it teach us? It teaches us, use women. It, it, it doesn't make us think about marriage from a long-term perspective. And even when people are married, they commit fornication. They commit affairs. And there's statistics to show that the amount of partners you have before marriage correlates with the chances of you committing a, having an affair after marriage. Yeah? So this breaks down society. And for me, this is Satan moving us away from God. This is the way I like to think about it. I just want your thoughts on this. Th these, are my, these are my thoughts. What's your thoughts on this? 
I agree with what you're saying. I do agree with what you're saying. I'm not, um, I'm not disputing anything of uh, what you just said and so forth. I wouldn't um, say that. Um, it's a, I mean, it's just a select view. I wouldn't say it's everywhere and so forth. You know, there's messages. I mean, even in all kinds of religions and so forth, you've got people who are gonna. Um, um, basically give the message what you're, you're giving out and so forth and then you've got to have people within the same religion who has a different, who has a, a, a different outlook on it and so forth whatever. Unfortunately that's the kind of world that we live in as well. So it's what we take from, we take from what, what you're, you're getting from whatever teachings and so forth and if it's your truth, you're living by that. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good way of putting it. I would also add that without God, without us following God's guidance, we can't as a society move away from these types of things because if you look at these industries they're very very strong they're very very strong now if you go look at billboards or these types of things they have all these types of messages everywhere from a young age you've been indoctrinated and what we're taught today is the nike slogan which is just do it now just do it it looks like a harmless symbol but it's not it's basically telling you do what you feel that's just how you interpret it though. Because some people can interpret it differently. What I would say is generally capitalism, generally the marketing machine, including Nike, including others, the main message is to do what you feel, do what you desire. And this is the opposite of what God's message to humanity is. God's message is do the right thing, not just do what you want. And that's where I see the conflict between God's message and the message that we have in contemporary society today. Can I ask you a question? Let me just complete the conversation. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And would you say you, you yourself, you're religious in any way? I wouldn't say I'm religious, but I have an open mind. Um, I'm open to hear and learn. Okay. So it's, 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 um, I don't have one standpoint. It's this way and that way. I could easily close, like many, many people, they could easily close themselves off. But I do believe you get to a point in your life where you want to see truth. Yes. Whatever that truth is, whatever that truth is, uh, way of life or so forth, whatever, you are going to see some kind of truth to a point of meaning of your own life. So, so um, I guess in part of time, my life now, it's just a case of listen, see what makes sense, see what. What, um, what, what essence I get from what I, from what I learn. Mm. Is it my truth? Is it the truth? You know what I mean? It's okay, I'll have the truth what many will follow and so forth, but um, I think you've got to start within you first before you can actually project mm. what you believe in and so forth. So, That's yeah. a very good way of thinking about it. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name? My name's Colossus. Huh? Colossus. Colossus, nice name. Yeah. My name is Sabu. So Colossus, um, you said something which I want to pick up on. You said there's a point in your life where you start thinking about this. That's something I agree with, so elaborate on that. Is it that you get older and these questions become more important? You do get wiser. You get wiser. Um, um, from, from experience. Everyone has their own experiences. So whatever experiences that you experience in life, you get to a point whatever you believed in before or your way of life, sometimes that experience might have put you in a position of where, where your health where your health is being questioned or basically just the way you're, you're, you're living is there, or you're hurting other people mm. so you do get to a point where you're, you want to question yourself on you, whatever has happened before you've looked at it and you're thinking hold on a minute I may have you know 10 years ago I may have handled that differently yeah. today I'm handling it this way and so forth okay what is it I'm learning just from that experience True. so you want to take that further I like I like the way that you put that and would you say that the question of the meaning of life or why we are here that also becomes more important as we get older oh, definitely. I believe there's a, there's, there's a reason for it I don't believe that it's just a case of nothingness it's a case of nothingness there's, there's, you know, there's a purpose of something whatever that purpose is whether it's um, what, I mean as we're living we're living beings obviously we want to you know, we want to have that essence in our life. What is it? What is it that's going to motivate you in the morning? What's it going to motivate you throughout the day? What's going to motivate you? How are you? Going, are you going to be satisfied by the time by the time you go to go to your bed? Are you satisfied with how you lived throughout your day? What message have you have you projected out there? 
out there, whether you see to the world, the universe, however you, you see it, what is it that your what, what teachings are you giving to your family, your friends, and yeah. so forth? How are you living? If you have children, how are they seeing it? Mm. And so forth. And you know, that's where that's how and um, why I say you get to a point. Yeah. You know, I, I do see I, I, life is an adventure, you've got to embrace it. Mm. So what is it that you want to get from that adventure? Mm. I think that's a really good way of putting it. And uh, I would add to that, that when it comes to God, that's also something that I would say as we get older, we start to reconsider our relationship. What would you say to that? I can understand that, I, I can understand that definitely. Um, depending on the individual as well, definitely. You, you are going to, um, especially if you feel, if you believe in the God in the first place, and you want a relationship, then of course you are going to go and you are going to see what is going to make what I believe logical sense. Yeah. Um, or just a sense in general, because some people, yeah, some people, every, everyone's, everyone's, we all speak a different voice. Everyone's voice is unique. All, that's what makes us human beings so unique in yeah. general. We're all individuals. So you are gonna seek, like I said earlier, you're gonna seek your, seek your dream, mm. whatever that case is, whatever that purpose sure. is. You are gonna seek, it. Yeah. and you, you are gonna look at, and I, I feel you have to be open-minded. Um, in order to get to that conclusion. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, just because someone has said, this is the way to live, this is how it is, and so forth. Question it. Question, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And, and you know, this is one of the things in the Quran that God says, think, reflect, question, ponder. Don't just blindly accept. And one of the messages of the Quran is, don't follow your ancestors, follow the truth. Don't follow desire, follow the truth. Why? Because in life, we fall into two traps. We either do what we like or we do what other people are doing. Our ancestors, our society. The Quran says don't do both. Follow what is the truth and use your reason to come to it. Now about your relationship with God, would you say that you believe in God or you are unsure about God? Where, where do you lie when it comes to God's existence? I've been on a journey which is a bit of both. Evolved. <laughs> it's definitely, and it's, it's, it's definitely one where I have questioned for many years. And then there's certain things that, again, through experience, you question things. So it's more a case of, okay, I've closed my mind off to, um, to, to the experiences that you've gone through. You get to a point where you think, okay, I may have closed my mind off to certain things, but because this particular thing has happened, maybe I need to question it. Mm. Maybe I need to question why I responded that way. Maybe I need to question why it happened that way. Was this a miracle? Was this divine intervention? Was this, you know, a case of luck and so forth? So I believe sometimes people, you know, come, uh, a part of their life, a part of their life, they get to a point where they're like, let me question that. Let me mm. let me understand why that happened. Mm, and absolutely. I think that's where your journey can begin. I think that's a uh, that's an that's a journey which a lot of people go through. They start questioning. And it's interesting that you, you start reflecting, okay, was this God intervening in my life to give me a reminder or was this chance? Would, would, you, say, would you say that the death of a close member of uh, your family or someone having cancer or these types of events, would you say they trigger these thoughts as well more? They can do. They can do. Um, I know people who wouldn't think that way. But again, that's down to people's experiences. So, and those experiences, despite what anybody believes, and so you, your experience is your experience. What if you get from that experience, it's going to reflect. And you are going to reflect. Some don't think in the way of, oh, it may have been God. Some think, oh, it's just one of those things that happen. But I, I'm one of those who believes, okay, why did it happen? Mm. You know, let me, is there logic behind that? What is the what what is behind that? What is the reason why that happened? Mm. So you know, again, I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm optimistic and I'm open-minded. Mm. So I, I believe there are answers. Yeah. But you know, some sometimes you can get experiences. You think to yourself, is there an explanation for it? Mm. You know, can that can that explanation be or can that that experience can it be explained? Yeah. Is there an actual answer for what actually just happened yeah as well. and, um, these are quite, these are related to the heart I would say a lot of this is not about logic it's about it's a, like the, what what God says in the Quran is whoever comes to God with a sound heart will be saved a sound heart so 
having a connection with God, we can decipher what is God's intervention in our life. What does God want from us? And one of the messages of the Quran is God is closer to us than our jugular veins, right? Even though God is above everything, God is closer to us than our jugular veins, meaning if we remember God, God remembers us. If we try to connect with God, God connects with us. And there's a proverb that, you know, if you feel you're distant from God, it's you who moved, not God. <laughs> so a lot of these things, Islam, it teaches us through connecting with God, through prayer, we can make sense of what's happening to us in our life. So you yourself, do you ever pray to God? Do you ever ask for guidance? Okay. You know, I want to recommend Malcolm X's biography because he used to ask for guidance before he became Muslim. And his journey is a journey which is not just logical but spiritual as well. Because he didn't come from a Muslim background, he came from a Christian background. And his journey towards faith is something which is a lesson for a lot of people. I mean, I, a few years ago, I was looking, um, somebody was telling me that there's a massive uh, number of people who accepted Islam because of him, even though he died in his 40s, but they were inspired by his story and they read his book. So I, I would recommend you read his biography because it's, it's, you've got it, yeah? I have read it, yeah. What, what were your thoughts on it? It's an interesting journey. Very interesting journey. Um, again, like I said, people are unique. Like I said, it's an interesting journey, um, and a lot of people can be inspired by that. A lot of people can be inspired, but um, also people have their own lives. They're going to also be inspired and go from their experience, their existence, and, and go from there as well. That is just part of someone's journey as well. Mm. And I mean, so as much as we can be inspired by his, his journey and his relationship with God, you know, also, I mean, that's from the outside looking in. But you also, you've got to look at your own self as well. Yeah. What have I learned from that book? Okay, can I relate to that? Some can, some, some might not. Mm. But everyone's journey, is, everyone's journey is different. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and you know, you're, you're right about the sort of, because his journey is unique, everyone's journey is unique, but one common factor is asking for guidance. Because ultimately, in our life, life is just as crazy as Speaker's Corner is here. You, when, when you're new to the place, you don't know what's what. Life is kind of like that. We're kind of like walking around in a maze. We don't know what decisions to make in our lives. But it's God's guidance. And by praying to God, that life starts to make more sense to us. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, again, down to, down to experience. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. So I, I really enjoyed my conversation with you. I'm going to give you a little booklet about Islam. You can read it further. And the thing about Islam is, look, Islam says the purpose of life is to worship God. It's a very simple thing. What does worship mean? It means you love, hope, fear, trust, everything's in God. And everything we do in our life ultimately is for God's pleasure. And we believe as Muslims, the only way to be truly happy is by making God happy. Then you will have peace and happiness. And one of the things that Malcolm X also speaks about is inner peace. Yeah? And inner peace, we believe, cannot be made until the human being is at peace with God. And how are you at peace with God? By submitting to God. And submission to God is what Islam is. You know when you look at religion, Hinduism is from the Indus Valley region, India. Christianity goes back to a particular person, Christ. Judaism goes back to a race. Islam simply means submission. And we believe Jesus, Moses, all these prophets, they submitted to God. And the message of Islam is not rocket science. And we believe it's more experiential than people think. People think it's all about, believe in my book. Why? Because I'm telling you to. But Islam says, 
ask for guidance, try to make a connection with God and you will see the truth for yourself. So I want to give you a booklet and any more questions, I'll give you my number, you can also ask me. Yeah?